This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do sort of a smackdown, more like a buyer's guide for the 2021 MacBook Pro models, the three different ones that you can choose from, and then the subtypes for each of the different sizes, 13-inch, 14-inch, 16-inch, and I'll even talk about the MacBook Air, because I know for some of you, you're on the fence. Should I spend more for the bigger one or just the more expensive one? Do I need these features? All that sort of thing. So this is going to be a kind of high level, especially for you, not ultra geeky buyers, but we will have some information about some of the more geeky comparison things. I'm not going to overload you with slides and ridiculous torture tests that don't represent real life and side by side running the same benchmarks. In fact, we actually have some of that in our full reviews of each of these models. This is going to be the summary kind of thing that you need to help you decide. We're going to do that now. So first off, there's a 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor and that came out and that was the first one, obviously about a year ago or so. And it's still a viable product, certainly, and it's there to be the more affordable. Uh, is it so pro? Not really so much. I mean, it kept the design of the previous Intel 13-inch MacBook Pro, but there's nothing super pro about it. But it does give you a few benefits over the 13-inch MacBook Air, which I'll talk about a little bit just because you might be considering, even if it's not part of the pro lineup. So with the MacBook Air, it's passively cool. That means there's no fan. So it's a little bit more thermally limited. It hits the performance a little bit. That's the main thing to be aware of with the MacBook Air versus the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Otherwise, they're pretty similar in terms of the hardware features that you can get, okay? So with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, you have the M1 processor. It's an 8-core processor, but that's not to be confused with the 8-core processor in the 14-inch MacBook Pro because... With the 13-inch, it's the four performance cores and four efficiency cores, which you might guess leads to better battery life but less performance. In your 14-inch MacBook Pro base model, you get six performance cores and two efficiency cores for that eight-core total. Mm -hmm. That tells you something right there. So just like Apple claims, battery life on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, because it has more efficiency cores, is going to be the best. They claim 17 hours up to use. And they're not so far off for very light work or streaming work and all that sort of thing. It's the laptop you just can't kill, though all of these have excellent battery life compared to Intel laptops and even AMD Ryzen on the market today. Besides the excellent battery life, you get a half pound less carry and you're spending less money. The introductory level model is $1,300. That only gets you 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, which you know, a Mac can run fine on that for everyday productivity work. For those of you who just stream Netflix or whatever, you do some Zoom video calls or FaceTime or Teams, whatever it is these days, Office, um, some Photoshop work, even doing some Final Cut Pro kind of stuff for fun, for hobby, not doing it for a living like we do many, many hours a week. It's fine for all of those things. It has an 8-core GPU. While the Pro models start at 14 to 16, it can go all the way up to 32 for the M1 Pro and Max models there. So obviously it's not for those of you who are professional photographers, right? You've got 545 megabyte Nikon files that you want to process in Lightroom and export to JPEG or something like that. You could do it with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but it would take you at least twice as long. So there's a trade-off in terms of battery life. If something is going to be twice as fast, we can't expect it to have the same battery life, can we? But that's why the 13-inch MacBook Pro is attractive. You don't get the fancy mini LED display, you get a pretty solid, decent IPS display with no notch. So for you notch haters, that's something to keep in mind. But one thing that I will say is if you're one of those people who says, I want 16 gigs of RAM, because honestly, the 13-inch MacBook Pro really should have just started with it. That's pretty much standard for $1,000 plus laptops these days. And maybe you want it at 512 gigs of storage or maybe even a terabyte. Well, if you're looking at a terabyte of storage and 16 gigs of RAM on a 13-inch MacBook Pro, and by the way, they max out at 16 gigs. If you want more than that, you have to look at the 14 or 16-inch. Uh, that brings the price up to $1,900. So then you look at the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the same RAM SSD configuration of 16 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. It's only $200 more. So then you might be upsold on things that the 14-inch has to offer, which is that mini LED display, the, but with a notch, and the higher resolution webcam. Now that webcaming is so much more of a thing in life. That's just something to keep in mind there. And also more performance. So future proofing. Who doesn't mind that? Especially because Macs tend to last a long time and Mac people seem to keep their Macs a lot longer than a lot of PC users do. So that 14 
inch model starts at two thousand dollars that gets you again it's the base model is the only one that differs from the options you could get on a 16 inch as well but that one is an eight core cpu six performance two efficiency and a 14 core gpu which is a lot more than the 13 inch macbook pro has to offer but lesser than every other configuration that's available for a 14 or 16 inch macbook pro Starts with 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm not having to pay to upgrade that, and a 512 gig SSD starting. You can go all the way up to like 8 terabytes with that if you need to. So you get that mini LED display, which is gorgeous. It's a noticeable difference from the 13-inch IPS MacBook Pro display, and that is nice to have. The notch, for me, kind of disappears. Now it has a 70 watt hour battery, which is a pretty beefy battery, but you also have a more performance CPU GPU going on inside there. So you're not going to get the same battery life, It'll, more like 11 hours instead of that 17 hours like Apple claims and which again is fairly accurate for light use or streaming video and all those sorts of things. Now with the 14 inch, I know some of you are starting to worry about this. You can get a pro, which is the lower end configuration or the max, which is the high end configuration. They're always for 14 and 16 inch, you're, other than the base model 14 inch, again, that gets confusing. You're always looking at the same 10 core CPU, eight performance, two efficiency, other than that base model there. So for those of you who have mostly CPU intensive stuff, you're not doing Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut, Blender renders, that sort of thing, then don't even pay for the Max in most cases because you're really just upgrading the GPU, which you can go to a 24 or a 32 core, okay? So important thing to keep in mind when you're buying your laptop. Do you need graphics stuff? Well, if you do, then it might be worth considering. But I know a lot of you are worrying about the thermal issues and the battery issues with the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. And let's face it, a 14 inch is attractive because it is so portable. But always, as we've seen with any laptop on the market, the more powerful and the smaller it gets, it gets a little bit hotter and the battery life isn't as good because small chassis, not as much room for a battery. Well, I'm happy to report having tested all configurations, again, watch our full reviews of the 14 inch and the 16 inch to see even more information, that the battery life hit is only about 5% and the thermal hit in most cases in terms of how it affects maximal performance in terms of timing how long it takes to do that Lightroom export, for example, or doing benchmarks, is only about 5% if you go to the max from the pro. So I don't consider that to be a no-no, a hit, a problem. If you want that max in a 14 inch, more power to you, do it. Now at the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro or Max CPUs, obviously this is the big daddy. You got a 100 watt hour battery, so you're gonna have longer run times than you would with the 14 inch, simply because it's not driving that much bigger display. You're looking at the same CPUs and GPUs, but you got a lot more battery. So that's something to keep in mind for those of you who need those long run times. Unfortunately, you usually want long run times because you're carrying it everywhere. And since you're looking at around five pounds for a 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's not as portable as the 14 inch. So that's the drawback there. And you have to decide with your okay living with that. If you can go to a store, pick them up, hold them, feel the weight on them, and you make the decision there on that one. But it is the max in performance, the max in thermal heat dissipation. Now, all of these M1 base Macs are really very thermally efficient. And it's astounding, like the 16-inch MacBook Pro can run on 100 watts with the max processor and 32-core GPU, which compared to anything comparable in the Intel world with dedicated graphics, you just can't even go there. It's efficient. It stays pretty cool. You hardly hear the fans on the 14 or the 16 inch in real world use, heavy use. Again, Blender renders, Final Cut Pro, all that sort of thing. With this one, same configurations. Again, you got the Pro, you got the Max. So you can go anywhere from 16 to 24 to 32 cores on that GPU. It depends whether you need the GPU power. When you do go to the max, something to keep in mind is the memory bandwidth doubles also. So that can help even CPU intensive tasks. So something to keep in mind, a little bit of a bump there for some CPU stuff. Which should I pick for me personally? Well, the 16 inch, because I've been using a 16 inch for years. I primarily use it on the desk in my office and I need the most horsepower possible. We do 4K videos, right? All the time, that sort of thing. So that is what it is for me. But again, it depends on what you need. So to sum it up, 13 inch MacBook Pro, because it is less expensive, unless you're going to those higher tier configurations, at which point it's not that much cheaper than a 14 inch, but it's the lightest carry, it's less expensive, it has the longest battery life. And by the way, because these all basically use the same M1 cores, the single core performance is actually just as good on the 13 inch as it is on the other machines. It's the multi-core that's gonna be different. So 
of course, most apps these days really rely on multi-core, but nice piece of trivia there and explains why your benchmark numbers look the way they do when you look at Geekbench and stuff. For the 14 inch, it's obviously for those of you who want all the nice stuff that you get by stepping up, the mini LED display, the better quality webcam, the better speakers on, and the possibility of getting that much more horsepower and a really compact chassis that still is thermally capable of handling the horsepower that's inside without melting down by any means. And then you've got the 16 inch for those of you who want to get even more battery life, the most thermal headroom for your performance and the biggest possible screen. One important caveat for you multi-monitor lovers, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air support only one external display plus the inter internal display. And unless you want to mess with display link. So go with the 14 inch or 16 inch models if you need to have multiple external monitors. And my buying advice to you is if you are looking at a 13 inch MacBook Pro or even an Air, hey, that's fine too. Really, if you don't do a lot of crazy heavy lifting, that's fine. If you can afford it, I do say go for 16 gigs of RAM. I know there are some Mac aficionados that are so impressed with unified memory and these new system on chips and they think you don't need it. For future pooping, for those of you who want to keep your Mac for five years or more, it's a good idea to get that and it'll save less paging to your SSD. There you have it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.